What's up guys, I have another video for you today and I think it's an actually pretty cool or interesting one because we're gonna be investigating a meta in the used PC world and that is the Dell Optiplex build. Let's go. Now Dell has been making these OEM Optiplex systems right here for quite a while and they come with all different kinds of hardware configurations, different IO and different form factors in terms of the case and what it features. Uh, but what is really interesting about these OEM systems is that starting around the 2011-2012 timeframe, they started being configured with second gen Intel Sandy Bridge processors. The i5 is normally what you'd go for, or an i7 or something like that because they're at least four cores. Uh, that still to this day, almost 10 years later, are an awesome bang for the buck four core or higher processor for gaming. Now, these aren't going to knock your socks off for all computer related tasks like video editing or streaming or anything like that. But if you're just trying to get gaming, these systems can give a great entry point to someone who doesn't mind a bit of tinkering, and I'm gonna show you a bit of that today. So before we get all the way into that, let's go ahead and hear a word from today's sponsor, URCD Key. URCD Key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchased them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices on their Microsoft Office 2016 bundle that comes with a Windows 10 license as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in your product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, type in my promo code, once again, RAV20, and see the sweet savings appear. Check the links in the video description to learn more. All right, guys, now to start this off, we actually have two Optiplex systems in the office, one sitting right here. Uh, this one right here actually features a second gen i5-2500 with uh, eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and the other one sitting down here somewhere uh, features an i5-4590 with also eight gigs of DDR3 RAM. So this 2500 system I picked up, it was $65, and the other one, the 4590 system, cost me about 150 bucks, which was a bit more than I wanted to pay, to be honest, but I still feel like we can get some value out of it once we add a couple of things and we're totally finished with it. So what I ultimately wanted to do with these two systems is clean them up, of course, uh, chuck in an 128 gigabyte SSD that's gonna be the boot drive that costs about 25 bucks, and then I have two 1050 Ti's uh, that I have on hand that I'm gonna throw in as well to see if, one, it actually works since they both have very limited power supplies, and two, what kind of gaming performance we can get out of these kind of systems. So let's cue the clean and build montage and get right into it. Okay guys, so now that everything is installed in these computers that we want put in there and everything's changed out, let's go ahead and do what we always do and go ahead and do a power test and see if they both power on and everything works and see if it boots to the, uh, the BIOS and everything like that. And then after that, we just gotta go ahead and install Windows 10 on both these machines and go ahead and test games after that. But first, like I said, let's go ahead and see if they both turn on. So we'll switch angles here and test them both. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the i5-2500 system. So let me go ahead and reach over here and turn the power button on. Okay, things are coming on, that's a good sign. It's possibly a good sign. Okay, things are happening. Fans are spinning. And let's see if we get some kind of boot screen. There we go, yes. Okay guys, so it did do a boot loop a couple of times, but then it actually got to this screen right here. So it looks like just this motherboard, this is how it was made. It looks like it tries to boot itself a couple of times and find media. So obviously since we don't have any, 
it gets to this screen right here and says no boot device found, but this is a good sign because that means everything we have in the machine is working so far. So let's go ahead and move on to the other machine and see if that one works. Okay guys, so now we switched over to the newer machine, the one with the newer processor, the 4590. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if this one works. All right, once again, we're getting some audible sounds here. Very good, that means fans are spinning, things are turning on. And there we go. The amount of system memory has changed, yes it has. Okay, is this what the BIOS looks like? We actually got to the BIOS in this one, okay, that's cool. So yeah, it looks like we have obviously uh, eight gigs of memory. Um, yep, and it running, it's running at 1600 megahertz, which is good. And let me see. Yep, there's our, looks like our 4590 right there, four cores running at 3.3 gigahertz, so that's kind of cool. So a lot of times, some of these uh, Optiplex builds, I, I, can, I actually can't, for some reason, get into the BIOS, and I don't know why that is, um, but looks like this one right here, um, uh, we got to it, so that's very cool. So everything's working, everything's looking good, so uh, as you guys know, the only thing to do now is to uh, boot these things up, install Windows, and test some games, so let's go ahead and do that.
guys. So now we have two fully built Optiplex machines, uh, the 2500 machine, which is this guy right here, and the 4590 machine right here. And they both work just fine. I popped in a uh, SSD in both of them and they boot really fast. The whole operating system's super snappy. And I threw a 1050 Ti uh, four gigabyte variant in both of these machines and they work great. No problems at all. Got the uh, new drivers installed and everything worked awesome. So as you saw, all the games ran, no real issues. Uh, there was a little bit of stuttering in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark on the 2500 machine. Uh, not sure why, maybe some kind of CPU limitation on that game, but uh, if you guys didn't know, the minimum requirements for Red Dead Redemption 2 actually are the uh, 2500K, so this is obviously the 2500, the non-K variant, but uh, yeah, this was able to run Red Dead Redemption 2 like you, like you saw, you know, just over 30 FPS. Both machines actually just got just over 30 FPS, very similar numbers in a lot of the games. And uh, that is due to obviously because a lot of games are GPU bound. And obviously since these two machines had the same GPU, you can expect very similar numbers. A couple of, uh, one of the games, I think Doom Eternal actually had a bit more variance, more like five to 10 FPS, but uh, that's just because maybe that game utilizes the machine uh, components a little bit differently. But all in all, both these machines are able to game at 1080p, medium, high settings, depending on the game, and uh, they do a great job. So I think these are gonna be really, really awesome options for a budget machine for somebody looking to do something like that. Now, one thing I also wanted to mention to you guys is the fact that, yes, you can just go ahead and grab an SSD, grab a graphics card that, make sure you remember this, does not require any PCIe power, okay? The reason I use the 1050 Ti on, on these machines is because you don't need a six pin or eight pin PCIe uh, power plug. And that, that is because these power supplies that come stock in these systems do not come with one. Uh, and the reason I did not change the power supply out in these systems is, well, the 4590 system, the motherboard is a little bit different and uh, the main 24 pin uh, power connector is different on this board and it's not a full uh, 24 pin connector, it's actually a smaller one, so it does not work with standard ATX power supplies. So it's a proprietary type thing that Dell does, which you'll find in certain pre-builds and stuff like that. So you kind of have to remember that and take that into consideration when you buy them. There's a give and take with these kind of things and you kind of just need to find the sweet spot uh, for the model of which Optiplex to get where you can actually switch out the power supply and then accommodate a even bigger graphics card. So that's all I'm gonna say about that, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you guys give this video a like. I really enjoy seeing you guys do that. Uh, and definitely do that if you guys like seeing content like this and you wanna see more. Uh, and on that note, if you guys do wanna see more content just like this, make sure you guys get subscribed to the channel and turn on the notifications. That way you can be notified when my next video or next stream is about to start. And until then, you guys, I'm gonna go game now. See ya.